never really saw myself as a person who needed the services of a charitable organisation or counselling. Um, everything was fine, everything was good. My name is Cindy. I lost my daughter through suicide. This is my experience. The day that my daughter took her life, I'd previously arranged with her the night before to collect her from her apartment to take her to her best friend's place. So I had no reason to suspect that anything was out of the ordinary. I arrived at her apartment and there was no answer. So I assumed she was still sleeping and the door was unlocked and I was going to chastise her about leaving the door unlocked. I walked into her bedroom expecting to find her asleep and instead I saw what no parent should ever have to see. I knew in the split second that I saw her that my daughter was deceased, yet that vision is still completely burned into my mind all of these years later. I was just completely shocked and overwhelmed and panic stricken. I tried to call the ambulance but my thumb wouldn't work properly to unlock the keypad. I ran out screaming at a child walking a dog, he couldn't help me. So I eventually was able to call for an ambulance. I did not want to go back into the house, I just couldn't face what I'd seen. So many thoughts were going through my mind while I was waiting for the ambulance. I actually thought my daughter was playing some sort of horrible joke and that she would come out and apologise. Then I suddenly realised, how do I survive without my daughter? This is every parent's worst fear. My daughter had on occasion, in a moment of rage or wanting to get her own way or disappointment, screamed things at me, like I may as well just go and kill myself then. And at the time when you're engaged in a sort of heated argument with your daughter, you don't actually think she means what she's saying. But with hindsight, I wish more than anything that I could just jump back into that moment and just grab her and hug her and make everything all right. My family were also obviously in shock and had never experienced anything like this. We hadn't lost anybody in my family. My grandmother's still living. So people are thrown into this insane situation and people are well-meaning. They go through the motions, they do the right things. They ask you how you are, they hug you, they're with you for a couple of weeks or at least until the funeral's over. And, and in the end, they weren't, I needed more. I needed to speak with people that understood what I was going through, people I could relate to. So I googled suicide support groups and thankfully I found one close to where I was living. I was a bit apprehensive when I first joined the support group but to finally meet with other people in my situation, to see that they're from all walks of life, just regular people and it's almost like seeing that immediately took away some of the feeling of stigma for me because I felt that suicide only affected some types of people, but to see that it affects, it doesn't discriminate, it affects people from all walks of life was so comforting. And just to be able to speak with people who knew how I was feeling and to get that reciprocated support was fantastic. Having participated in the support group and really worked through my grief, my bereavement, the memories of my daughter are now no longer overshadowed by one day, the day that she passed away. The memories I have of my daughter now span her entire beautiful life and I'm so thankful for that. It's, it's like I'm now relishing in the beautiful soul that was my daughter rather than focusing on that horrible day. A couple of years after I lost my daughter, I was approached by a group who was putting together a Life Keeper memory quilt which is a visual representation of a small percentage of people who take their lives each year in Australia. And it's so much more 
healing and beneficial to see people represented this way rather than just a statistic, a dry, hard statistic, a file in a coroner's office. You know, it's this is the real human face of the tragedy that is suicide that takes more lives than car accidents and murder together each year. And yet not everyone's aware of that. It's just such a comforting, supportive feeling to know that I can think back to what I learnt in the group and that's still with me today and will always be with me. I'm talking about my experiences today because I really think it's imperative that those affected by suicide who have lost a loved one to suicide and are in the depths of that absolute personal hell feel that there is some sort of hope. There are some amazing services out there and I really encourage people to tap into those because they will change your life.